What's up? What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this video. Um, what's up, guys? Just a couple of things before we get started. First off, look what I got. Shout out to my friend Oliver. A proper fucking microphone. Nice. Mwah. I love you, Oliver. Okay. Uh, where was I? That's right. Cataclysm challenges. Um, what I've done in this video is basically just slap four of them together, uh, put on some commentary, explained what the tactics and strategies were, and uh, pretended it was content. Now, uh, I've been really, really busy with the Waystalker guy, which is why I haven't been uploading as much this week. It's primarily due to the fact that uh, Season 2 completely wrecked Hackbane Shortbow. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it's not viable anymore, but completely changed the entire fucking guide, okay? <laughs> like, uh, half the fucking guide was the fucking Hackbane Shortbow. <laughs> um, there was so much stuff about, I'm not even joking, like I was 75% done or something, and like literally every single clip that I've collected on the hack paint, just trash can. So, uh, but anyways, I had to go everything through just to double check that, you know, everything was still valid and the, that the meta was still what it was. And uh, Anyways, I'll explain that in, in that video, which I'll probably release either Wednesday or uh, Friday. So it's probably going to be done Wednesday, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, but in this video, we're gonna get into some Ocris challenges. And uh, if you guys, uh, if you guys hit this like button 100 times, or, or subscribe 50 times, I'll, uh, I'll show you my party knife. Yeah, I, I have a party knife. I'll show it to you guys. I, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> For real though, let's get started. First off, we have the troll. Now on Cataclysm, uh, as well as on Legend, there's a challenge which basically states that you have to kill the Mile Troll that spawns at the end event of Hunger in the Dark in less than 15 seconds. Now, the 15 second timer starts as soon as you ring the bell. Like the second you play E, the timer starts. On top of that, you have to, have to take into account that after ringing the bell and moves a bit, then the door opens, then the troll moves out. But all of you there, you lost at least 3 seconds. On top of that, you don't have to damage the boss down to half HP, then he's gonna go down into his animation, drop down, then you have to remove half of his HP again, and then you have to wait another couple of seconds for his second animation to get back up, only to then deal the last half of his HP to kill him in less than 15 seconds. That's not easy. I've seen it done, but it is really difficult on Cataclysm. It requires a lot of coordination, more people, Shade Kong Pod, Huntsman Kong Pod, bringing the pit, uh, the control. What I'm trying to say is it's really difficult, but do it. Instead, what you can do is, I've showed you before really quickly in the video, but I didn't explain it, so. What you can do instead is you can basically instant kill. Now, the trick here is to send everyone but one player, preferably someone who has a little bit of mobility, a bit of survivability, and the ranged attack as well, he has to have some ranged attack. And then you send your entire team all the way up to the end. Basically, they move forward until you, they can't get any further, across the bridge to the left, up until uh, until they can't get any further, and they wait there. And once you're in a, in a position where there aren't too many minions behind you, you do ring the bell. And then you shoot the troll in order to aggro it and make sure your team does not aggro it. They're not allowed to shoot it at all. So you bring the bell, aggro the troll, and then you position yourself just shy of halfway across the bridge. Now, the reason for this is if you position yourself correctly and let the boss kill you, then once you die, the boss is standing on top of the bridge. And once you're dead, the end event triggers removing the bridge. And you want to be really careful not walking too close to the troll because then he's going to start vomiting and not move far enough. And also you want to watch out that you don't get attacked in the back and die from minions before he, uh, like before he gets far enough. So, uh, but if you time it perfectly, then uh, it's a 7 second troll kill. Up next we have Against the Grain. Now, 
the Cataclysm Challenge as well as Lightning Challenge for Against the Grain states that you need to release all the prisoners in less than 60 seconds. Now, this 60 second timer starts as soon as you open the first cage or release the first prisoner. And basically, the overall strategy here comes down to separating or dividing the prisoner releases in two or three bits. Uh, at minimum two, but you might as well divide it in three if you're uh, more than two people on the team. Um, pretty much, first you the first role is the rusher, right? The handmaiden with a Kong pod or a speed pod. He's gonna rush the initial four. Now, after he's opened the first four yeah. cages, like the first Can four, start, after, I guess. Uh, the starter, the starter, uh, the four cages that are inside the first house, then the ladder is gonna drop down. The three others are gonna wait at the ladder. And as soon as it drops, we're gonna jump up the ladder. So let me just showcase exactly what I mean. Uh, if you're playing the handmaiden, and exactly how far you gotta rush before the ladder drops down, just uh, so you get the full picture in case you're uh, you're an elf main. So you basically just rush down here through the basement, quickly up the ladder, and open these four. One, two, three, four, and boom, the ladder is gonna drop down. Like, I'm playing the rusher part number two, so as soon as the ladder drops, I'm gonna rush the final four in the last house, the two top and bottom ones. And then the idea is that the two remaining uh, guys, they basically take the middle ones. Like, they, they aren't the issue. Um, so there we go, as soon as he's finished doing that. Now, it is doable without a Kong pot or speed pot here, but then Handmaiden has to do it perfectly, and if you don't have an ability to move across here, then you're gonna have to do a perfect uh, crotch jump to get over here, because you have to take the top ones first. You're oh simply nice. not gonna have enough time if you uh, take the bottom, so bottom ones first. Mm. Another option is to have two people rush the final four and have one go top, one go bottom. But it's really not necessary. So really, you need two people forming uh, effectively. Like the handmaiden, and whoever takes the, the final four. Just the two middle ones, like, they're, they're no issue. Um. Up next, we have the war camp. Now, the war camp challenge states that you need Bodvar, aka the um, Chaos Warrior on steroids, the guy right there. You need him to charge into five Chaos Warriors, or charge a Chaos Warrior five times. Now, the strategy for this is usually get a good handmaiden, first of all. Someone who's comfortable on handmaiden, get minion dodge. Uh, DPS him a little bit until the first minion starts spawning. And basically just clear everything that isn't a chaos, spawn, uh, chaos warrior. And often it, what will happen is, is, and what's gonna happen here as well, is that it's a lot easier to trigger one man than it is when you're four people alive at the same time. Hence the handmaiden, because uh, you're going to be sure that you can uh, rest everyone afterwards when you need to kill all the Chaos Warriors again. Because as you can see here, they're all spread out. Getting him to actually charge you and into the Chaos Warrior is going to be tricky at best in this scenario. But as soon as everyone is dead, he's going to charge you all the time. Like he has no choice. You will see. He charges you. All of the Chaos Warriors are also going to follow you. So, in in that scenario, it's going to trigger in no time at all. So yeah, obviously the key is not to get stuck and just take your time and be patient. So how do you do
Man, we got it. So, no, it already popped, right? But just just to showcase here. <laughs> Assuming they hadn't all uh, take so long to kill themselves. The fastest way to do it would just be like this. Because like <clears throat> he's guaranteed to go into charge animations like this. So they're pretty much always going to be a Chaos Warrior in line of sight. But yeah, once you get the challenge, you just want to rush your teammates and clear everything up. It's pretty straightforward. Always make sure you use your ulti into the wall. Next we have the Skipper Gate. Skipper Gate. Although I think they actually might finally have fixed it. I haven't probably tried it yet. But uh, anyway, anyways, we'll see some other time. Pay attention, pay attention. This is very important. Muy, 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 muy important. Okay, so you're damaging him, right? Okay, okay, look, look. Keep an eye on him. You ready? Right there. See that? Let, let's see that again. Boom. You know what just happened? No, me neither. But uh, we're about to find out at the end of this countdown. Skip it, or did you watch it? If you did watch it, uh, that's 10 free points to you, mister. No. Okay, <laughs> watch what happens here. Like, he's completely, like, it's like it's like his AI is, like, has been removed. Cause, like, like, he behaves like minions do on the modded realm when you turn off the AI. And literally, I have no idea what happened. It, it looks like I damaged him. Like, like, he triggered his teleport back mechanic, and somehow I got a shot in, in between, and for whatever reason, that just caused him to lose his AI, I don't, I don't know. But the weirdest thing is that we actually got the challenge for this. Which doesn't make a lot of sense if you think about it. But uh, since I have absolutely no idea how to replicate that, uh, <laughs> we're gonna cut to another clip where uh, we almost made it, but where the strategy made a lot more sense and where it was actually meant to be, but where we fucked it up at the end because they uh, they changed in Winds of Magic. They made it so you could no longer bring him down to actual. You couldn't actually can't actually kill him anymore. So if he goes below uh, like around five to ten percent. If you get him below that threshold, he's actually going to regenerate a chunk of health. And that chunk of health that we didn't know he was going to regenerate made the difference. Uh, so, but uh, the tactic here is you want to go two and two, right? Two pe uh, like two persons on each side. Then you want to be highly, like, highly accurate and you want to focus the controller. Only the controller. Why only the controller? 
because otherwise you don't ensure that he drops down at least three times, and he's really really hard to DPS low enough um, if you only get two attempts. So three is definitely preferable. So you're not in a hurry. That's what you gotta think. Like even if someone dies, there's no timer on getting this guy killed. So take your time, rest everyone if you have to, reposition, and then just slowly chip away by shooting the controller, only the controller, right? So it's okay to miss the controller, but you should always, you shouldn't be damaging him on purpose without having a shot that you're aiming at the controller, at least not until uh, you've downed him three times. As soon as Raskin falls down, that's when you want to burst him with everything you got. Uh, but actually not with everything you got, because again, if you stack or him, like if you have a shade drinking a conch pot, like I will, then you don't want to have a Sienna shooting him with a beam stack, for example, because that's just going to stack or him unnecessarily for almost no damage, and uh, potentially cause him to actually jump back up on his back, and you're going to lose a bunch of conch pot value, right? So once a conch pot or something like similar to that is active, you just want to let uh, whoever that is do his thing and just maximize his damage. And once he hits a certain damage threshold, he's going to jump up again automatically as well. Now, if you have, if the big guy, uh, the death rattle, if he's shooting at you and you don't have cover, any weapon with more than I think it's like 10% dodge distance, which is like almost all weapons. If you just dodge straight in a straight line, like don't no curvature, just straight line, conti continuously, then uh, it shouldn't damage you. Like you might get it once or twice, but if you just do it in a straight line, uh, he, his aim is not going to be able to follow your dodges. So uh, that's always a safe way to get out of his line of sight. And take out the freaking uh, berserkers or monks. Like they're they're gonna be a huge nuisance, and you're really not in a hurry, so you you might as well take them out safely. And just slowly swap the acro between the two sides. It might get a bit more chaotic than this, uh, depending on <laughs> how you know how coordinated your team is and. How much you bother to actually uh, plan it out, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be this coordinated here. As long as everyone is in on the fact that you want to shoot the controller, then you should be fine. Uh, if people are aware that when he falls down, then you burst him, then the only real bit of coordination that has to be on point is at the very end. Now, the second drop here. Again, my team is just letting me do it, because uh, we were on voice comms. There we go, and he's back up. Now what you don't want to do, which is what we're about to do, is on his third drop. You don't want to waste like a compot, for example, to get him unnecessarily low. Because that's just actually just going to uh, backfire. But you can you can see that shortly. So the important thing at the end is the positioning, right? You want to make sure you don't kill the big guy with your ulti, because then you're not going to have it for after. So you might as well use slow DPS to actually trigger the big guy's kill, and then you have your ulti ready, and a strength pod or a kong pod, and you're ready to um, to kill him at the spot where, uh, like, he's going to go into the corner first, you might want to do, like, one ulti there, and then he's going to do his death animation, which, which takes a couple of seconds as well, so you need to keep that in mind. That's in the, like... That's part of the, the 20 seconds you have. Let's see, we got him down here the third time. And this is what you don't want to do. But as you can see there, you, you see that? 
just stop here. As you can see, he actually gained a big chunk of health, which essentially made the difference uh, for this run to whether or not we actually managed to get the Kata challenge. So once he's down, see here, only takes a single ulti and a little bit of auto attacks, and then he's gonna trigger his death animation. And then I should have been ready here with a Kong pot or a strength pot or something, an ulti, right? So that's the mistake you don't want to make, because we thought we could actually kill him entirely. It's so clear to see, I know that I'm not going to be able to make the kill in time. But yet, I want to so badly, it's so clearly visible. <laughs> it's like, no, maybe, but no. But yeah, anyways, if you had been there in time with the pot, then uh, that's your way to do it. So try to position yourself yeah, two and two, swap the aggro a bit, focus the controller, once he's down, burst him, and make sure you have at least one like ace up your sleeve for the final uh, the final burst, right? Uh, so it's better to chill out on the third burst, and then uh, <laughs> give it 110% once he triggers his death animation. Anyways, that's it for me guys, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, found it useful, hopefully you get those sweet, uh, sweet, sweet, sweet Emperor's Vaults, and uh, perhaps even uh, the frame, so uh, I'll see you guys next time, peace out.